On today's show, I'm going to show you how to make a pillow that will coordinate with a quilt. We have two projects today. Let's take a look at the quilt behind me. It's called a pinwheel quilt and it's pretty easy to do. Then our second project is a coordinating pillow. And I have that right here using the same colors. So let's take a look at how we'll get started. First of all, we have to choose the fabrics that we're going to use. And I started with this fabric. I really like that fabric. You know, every once in a while a fabric just talks to you and says, buy me. Well, I really like this one. Uh, probably a lot of people wouldn't, but I did. And then to make my quilt and pillow, I wanted to pick out two colors, one light and one a little darker, that were in here. Now, I could have gone with the blue or the purple, but I decided I wanted to really highlight the red fabric in here. So my second fabric is red, then my light fabric is a yellow, which picks up the lighter shades of yellow in this fabric. Okay, now that we have our fabric, I'm going to cut two and a half inch strips, and they'll be used for both projects. And I've already done that, and I've sewn my, my strips together, and then for the quilt, I'm going to cut these pieces into squares. So I have to know how wide my two strips, my strip sets, my strip set is, and it's exactly four and a half inches. So if I come here and straighten this by lining a ruler up, just turn it a little bit here, line the ruler up with a line right on the seam line to keep it straight. Trim that edge. Then remember I said it was four and a half inches. So I'm going to come along here at four and a half inches. Place that line right at the edge. Now if you're cutting a lot of pieces, you might want to mark your fabric so that you always cut on the same line. And again, we want to line a line of the ruler right on the seam line. We have this line on our cut edge and cut our pieces and we have perfect squares. Now, what I like to do is give you what I call an accuracy test. And what that means is if you have a square cut, you should be able to fold it diagonally and it will meet at both corners. That's sort of a test because it's important that our pieces are the right size. All right, for the quilt then we have a lot of these pieces cut and we'll sew those together. And right here I have two of them. What we're going to do is make a pinwheel. I have two pieces sewn together here, matching just at the top and bottom. And then my seam allowance is pressed away from this cross seam. So I don't have a lot of bulk building up in the seam allowance. So the seam allowances would be pressed toward this solid strip with no seam and the same on this side. So then when we go to sew these together, we have an interlocking seam, and we've talked about that in this series, how that's an easy seam to match. So we would just sew here. Interlocking means this top seam is going away from you as you sew. The bottom one is towards you, so those seams will just sort of fit together and lock. And then we press our seam allowances. Here we go, right here. And you can see the center seam can be pr uh, pressed to either side. Doesn't matter. And we have our pinwheel. Now, after you have this pinwheel made, then you need to measure it because depending on the width of your seam allowance, and you know, we always stress a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I teach a lot of classes and in one class, we may have three or four different widths of seam allowance and everybody thinks they're a quarter of an inch. 
So you use your seam allowance. So what you need to do now is to measure this whole pinwheel. And it's about eight and a quarter inches. So now we need to cut a strip that width and then cut that into a square. All right, so it will fit our pinwheel. And it's important that it fit your pinwheel and not mine. And to make the quilt, we just alternate the squares and the pinwheels. Okay, let's go on now and take a look at how we're going to cut our, our star for our coordinating piece. We use the same strip of fabric, the two strip set. I'll push it, put it this way. And we want to make an eight-pointed star. So what I'm going to do is use the Star Maker 8. Now you'll notice here I have these strips offset. This one is longer than this one. That's so I can cut more pieces because see where it will be when we cut? We would have lost all of this if they had been at the same place. Okay, since I'm right-handed, I'm going to turn it around to cut it. Line it up here along the whole bottom of the strip. and then cut. And I'm using the Star Maker 8 because our star has eight points. To determine how far along this strip we're going to come before we cut our second piece, we need to use that same measurement that we used on our uh, quilt, the, the measurement of the strip set, which remember was four and a half inches, so I'm going to mark my ruler and then put that right on the cut edge so it lines up right here. Then I need to butt the Star Maker 8 right up next to it, making sure that the whole bottom of the Star Maker lines up with the bottom of the strip. So the ruler is just for distance. Remember that. We'll remove it, the ruler, and cut. And again, we have an accuracy check. If we go point to point, right here, the other points should line up. If they don't, you know you need to go back and remeasure. So it's a good idea to check it before you cut too many. Okay, so just go ahead and for our eight pointed star, we need to cut eight of these pieces. We'll just cut one more here. Again, the ruler for distance, the four and a half inch line is right on the cut edge. The bottom of the Star Maker 8 is along the bottom of the strip, and we'll cut it. And eight of those pieces, as I said, will give you an eight-pointed star. Okay, so I already have my pieces cut, and what we're going to do now is to sew them together. And we can either put our print in the middle, the purple and red print, purple, yellow, red, or we can put the red points in the middle and our star will look different. I have chosen to put the purple, the wild print, in the middle of the star, just as I did in the middle of the pinwheel on the quilt. So we'll take two of these pieces, put them right sides together, and sew them. And you can see that there is no, nothing to match as far as seams inside of the star just the top and the bottom. So let's sew those. I've got my uh, starter scrap on my machine. I'll just sew off that and onto my diamond. And make sure that the bottoms line up also. And then we'll go right to the other two. And remember, we're putting this print in the middle, so those are the points that have to match. And our star is well on its way to being finished. Again, we line up the bottom. And I'm just going to reach around here and cut off my starter scrap. And so off the last point, we'll cut these apart, and then it's time to press these. 
And we've talked about pressing in previous shows. We want to redu reduce the bulk in the seam allowance. So we'll want our seams pressed away from this cross seam and toward this piece that has no crosses. Okay, but we want to press from the right side of our fabric. We want to first press it exactly as it was sewn. Let the iron do the work. Just move it once across for each of our pieces. Here we go. Okay, now we're ready to sew these two pieces together and we'll have half a star done. And what we want to do is sew one half of the star and then the other half. So we have these two pieces. Now these tails or seam extensions will help you match these two pieces. Just line those up. And now we can do a needle match. We talked about this in our last show. A needle match is where you put your needle down right where the pieces are going to uh, cross each other. And let's do that. First, we'll put one piece in. And let's sew right, on, right to almost where it starts. We want the needle right down before we get onto the fabric. Okay, then we'll take this piece line it up and we also want to line up the seam line and you usually can just pull that back and make sure it's lined up and it should line up perfectly there this is one time it would be better not to use a pin but if you're more comfortable with it line up those seam lines and use a pin now we'll just hold the ends together Sew off, and again we'll sew onto our starter scrap so we don't have tails of thread. And let's take a look at our piece here. And here we have half a star, and this is where they had to match. Now again, anytime you're ma learning a matching technique, it might take a couple of tries but it's worth trying it without the pins if you possibly can. Now we're ready to press this. And which way do we press it? Well, we want to avoid the bulk that would be caused by this seam if we press that on top of it. We'd have four layers of fabric there, but if it goes this way, then we don't have as much bulk. Okay, so I'm going to first press it the way I sewed it then let the iron do the work and come across once. Okay, now we have two halves of our star. Now at this point you can cut those tabs off because we won't need them to do any more matching. There we go. And this one I've already trimmed. So here we have two halves of our stars. Now when it comes to matching the center point, we are going to have to pin that just to make it a little bit better. And I'm going to put the pin right in here and make sure it comes out right at the point. And then put this one right in at the point. Now, with the eight-pointed star, I use these as what I call holding pins. And I'm going to straighten those two sides this pin is always going to stay straight up and down. And now I'm going to take another pin and put it right in where that pin is and pin along the seam line. Make sure it comes along the seam line underneath. Now the holding pin is still there and that's important because now I want to put a pin in the other way. In fact, you might even want three pins in here. Let's put one right down the center. And it missed a little bit, so that would not have matched. Let me just retry that. 
right down the seam, right out the seam. Now you can take the holding pin and we'll take it and put it right through this piece, this seam. So we have, and again, that didn't match and that happens. That's why we need to pin in this case. So we'll just move that pin so it does line up. And so we have three pins in here now. Now we're ready to sew. Now we want to anchor this seam. That's another term I haven't used in this series. A lot of times in your directions, they will tell you to leave this open a quarter of an inch right on the edge to make the next step easier. Well, if you close it up, the next step is even easier. So, and that's what I call anchoring, when we sew all the way from one edge to the next. So we will anchor this by just starting right at the edge. There's no matching inside the star points on this particular star. Okay, now we're getting close to the pins. Now when the foot starts to go extend over the first point, the first pin, I'm going to remove it. I'm not real close to the where the pin goes through the fabric yet. I'm going to take a few more st stitches, then pull that middle one out, and I can take a few more, and I think you can see how the three pins together will steady it. Okay, I can take a few more, and when I'm just about one stitch away from that last pin, I'll remove it. And then hold these edges even. Stop and line them up as often as you need to. That's critical. Okay, let's go over now and see how we did and see how our point matches. And the first time you try it this way, it probably won't match, but it should get there in a hurry. And so at this point, we have a seam allowance that I'm going to first press to one side. It doesn't matter which side. First, we'll press it as we sewed it. But remember, we want to reduce the bulk. So now I'll press it to one side. And then when we're sure we don't have any creases along that seam, then we'll press that seam allowance open because we have quite a bit of bulk right in here. So let's press that open. And now we do have to press from the back to press it open. And just come along here. And now let's just take a look. And I have a, a piece finished here, ready to go. Pressed. And you've got a nice center point. And now we have to get ready to square up our pillow with squares and triangles. So let's take a look at how we'll do that. First of all, we're going to do the squares. That helps to stabilize the quilt block by doing the squares first, because when we cut squares, they're on the straight of grain on all four edges. So what I'm going to do is go back to that four and a half inch measurement that we had for our strip set, and I'm going to add one and a half inches to it. And that will take care of any seam allowance that need to come out, just works pretty well. And so four and a half plus an inch and a half gives us a six inch strip. So we'll take a six inch strip and then we're going to cut six inch squares from that. And I can, my ruler is six inches. I can just take it, line it up here and cut my strip and I'll need four squares for the pillow, one for each corner. Then what we're going to we're going to do what I call crease mark, another uh, technique for matching seams, and that's to take your square of fabric. This is also an accuracy test because you'll know it's a perfect square because we're going to fold it in half diagonally, right or wrong sides out, it doesn't matter, and give it a firm crease, and that's the crease we'll use to match it. 
And so we have one creased. Here I have two. Just take our square and crease it. Okay, now let's take our pieces, and here's our star. And these will go in the, the four corners. Let's take our piece here, and we want to line it up so that the crease goes following the seam line in the star. We'll sew this side to this side but we're going to sew with this square underneath. So let me turn it. We have a starting point on the seam, but what we need to do is mark the seam. I'm putting a pin in one quarter of an inch in from here, and it should go through the crease mark right underneath. And we'll just sort of play with those edges a little bit. And then we turn the pin and go this way, which is really, if you look at it, it will, should be right along the quarter inch mark underneath. So if it does that, matches right at the quarter of an inch, the seam and the crease, and then goes along that edge, then we can go ahead and sew that. We're going to start right on the seam line. So let's... Uh, Put the needle down right in the seam, right where the pin is. And if it's hard to see on your fabric, the fact that the pin's there, the shininess of the pin might help you to see it. So I'm right, the needle is right down in the center of the seam. I'll remove the pin, put the presser foot down, and we'll sew to the edge. Keep the edges lined up. All right, and now we go back. And now we have a guideline on our yellow fabric. So we'll fold our star, line this piece up with this edge, and it'll look like this. Your star will be folded right where we started. The crease line is right on the edge. So we'll start sewing right there. And again, it takes a little bit of practice. We'll put the needle down right in on the seam line exactly where we stopped sewing. Now, if you need to put a pin in here to see that seam line, go right ahead and do that. And once we have all four corners done, then our star is well on its way to being finished. Okay, and let's take a look at our square. We have a nice square corner. And again, you'll do all four corners that way. And you would press the seam allowances toward the star. All right, let's take a look at how we're going to cut the triangles. This seems to give quilters a lot of problems because the straight of grain has to be on the outside of the triangle. So I'm going to take a, a larger piece of fabric of the yellow and I'm going to start by squaring up and I've already done this one end like this. Remember our strip set, it was four and a half inches. We add two inches to that, that gives us six and a half and we double it. Just take my word for it, that's what works. And you get 13 inches. So we have this squared up. I'm just going to reverse the Star Maker 8 here, and I'm just going to put a mark at 13, right, a diagonal mark right here. And then I'm going to line up the ruler with this and cut it. And let me just go ahead and do that. So we actually have a square that we can cut into all four triangles. And now, using the Star Maker 8, we'll just go corner to corner and cut it, and we'll get all, as I said, all four of our triangles. Here's one cut. Here's another cut. We take our triangles, 
and we fold them and crease them. We'll line up the creases in the triangle with the seam line here, pin it the same way we did for the squares and sew it the same way. And you'll have your finished pillow. And I hope you enjoy this project, both the quilt and the coordinating pillow. And I hope you join me on my next show when I'll share some more quilting ideas with you. For information on today's main demonstration, call 1-800-248-K. That's 1-800-248-5293. Or write to us at Kay's Quilting Friends, Post Office Box 456, West Branch, Michigan, 48661. Please remember to specify the program number. Kay's Quilting Friends is brought to you in part by Genomi America, Ant Light Technology, Clover Needlecraft, Sulky of America, and Brandies. Our thanks for joining us for this edition of Kay's Quilting Friends. We hope the ideas shared with you in this program will make your quilting more enjoyable. Please join us again on the next Kay's Quilting Friends.